Good evening to you all. Of the 13 Jesuits depicted here in this tribute to Jesuits in science, two, Ignatius of Loyola and Pedro Arupe, were actually not scientists. Their presence in this array of scientists is, however, absolutely necessary for an understanding of why science, among, among many other apostolic pursuits, has been special to Jesuits. In one of his foundational meditations in the spiritual exercises, Ignatius asks that we consider how God works and labors for me in all created things. This has been an inspiration for many Jesuit scientists. In 1544, a few years after the founding by Ignatius of the Society of Jesus in 1540, there were seven colleges or residences for Jesuit students near the universities of Paris, Louvain, Cologne, Padua, Alcala, Valencia, and Coimbra. These years were to see the birth of modern science and the sciences or an essential element in the education of Jesuits in these universities. At Ignatius's death in 1556, the Society of Jesus already had 35 colleges in different countries of Europe and one in India. Unwittingly at first, the young society had made educational work a key element of its apostolates and the sciences were by dint of circumstances an important part of that apostolate. Ignatius had not only inspired, but had, as was his custom, actually done something to find God in all things. Although Pedro Arupe studied medicine, I do not think he is thought of as a scientist. In his 18 years of service as superior general, he oversaw a renewal of the Jesuits so profound that he is revered by many as a second founder. In his desire to have Jesuits at the frontiers of modern culture, he encouraged the work of many Jesuit scientists. Dom Pedro, as he was affectionately called, once said, nothing is more practical than finding God that is, in falling in love in a quite absolute way with all that God has created. What an inspiration for Jesuit scientists. The Jesuit scientists in this wall sculpture are only a few of those who are renowned in the history of science for their pioneering work, but they are representative. They come from Spain, Italy, Croatia, Germany, the United States, and France, and have been pioneers in atomic theory, mathematics, planetary sciences, molecular biology, genetics, astronomy, geology, seismology, solar physics, and paleontology. More details of their marvelous achievements are available on the touch screen next to this sculpture. As just a sample of their magnificent work, I would like to mention Roger Voskovich, whose seminal works on atomic theory appeared well over a century before the birth of modern atomic theory. Guy Consolmagno, who was the first to suggest that there was a vast frozen ocean under the surface of Jupiter's satellite Europa, a discovery which is at the forefront of current research for biotic extraterrestrial systems. Athanasius Kircher, who was the first to observe microbes under a microscope, and Angelo Secchi, who first classified stars by their spectra, a technique for which he is known as the father of modern astrophysics. In 1551, Jesuits founded a modest college in Rome, which grew rapidly so that in 1584, with the generous support of Pope Gregory XIII, a magnificent building was inaugurated and the school became known as the Roman College, Collegio Romano. Since 1873, it has been named the Gregorian University in memory of its patron. 
The Roman College became a cradle of Jesuit scientists. Four of the figures celebrated in this sculpture began their scientific careers there, and they carried their scientific work to the ends of the then known world. With, for instance, Matteo Ricci, who due to his scientific prowess was invited as a Mandarin into the Forbidden City to serve the Chinese Emperor. The early years of the society and of the Roman College coincided with the beginning of modern science. In 1543, Nicholas Copernicus proposed the heliocentric system, which brought a radical change in astronomy and cosmology. Scientists began to unite observations and experiments with mathematical formulations. Since the Jesuit philosophy professors at the Roman College, who taught what was then called physica or natural philosophy, had to abide by the teachings of Aristotle the new ideas, which challenged Aristotelian natural philosophy, were promoted by the teaching of mathematics. Hence, it was through the teaching of mathematics in Jesuit colleges that a door was opened to modern science. This beginning of the scientific tradition of the Jesuits is tied to the figure of Christoph Clavius. Clavius was fundamentally a great teacher and Jesuit mathematicians and astronomers who came after him always considered him to be the one who initiated the Jesuit tradition in science. Throughout his life, he remained engaged in the new astronomical observations and theories, such as those of Copernicus, Tycho Brahe, Kepler, and Galileo. The first contact of Clavius with Galileo took place in 1587 during a visit of Galileo to Rome when he was just 23 years old. From this first contact, a lifelong friendship and correspondence began between the two in spite of their almost 30-year difference in age. Their professional friendship lasted until the death of Clavius in 1612, two years after Galileo's publication of his telescopic observations, the first new knowledge of the universe in about 2,000 years. In his waning years, Clavius studied Galileo's telescopic discoveries, the observations of the phases of Venus, of the satellites of Jupiter, which showed that not everything was in orbit around the Earth, of sunspots, of the myriads of stars in the Milky Way. These all indicated that the celestial spheres were not incorruptible and that the Earth was not a special astronomical object, contrary to Aristotelian doctrine. In the light of these observations, Clavius co commented that the celestial orbits need to be reformed. He did not live long enough to realize the significance of his scientific intuition. In 1611, during another visit to Rome, Galileo was received at the Roman College, where the Jesuits organized an academic assembly in his honor. In a welcome address, Galileo is called the one with all merit deserves to be held amongst, among the most outstanding astronomers of our time. Praise which was not well received by some Jesuit professors of philosophy because of their allegiance to Aristotle. Beware of the devil in your midst. Since the restoration of the Society of Jesus in 1814, Jesuits realized that the social, cultural, and scientific situation in the world had radically changed so that new ways to promote science had to be tried. From the middle of the 19th century, New observatories and institutions of higher education began to proliferate. The observatories began with that of the Roman College in 1824, followed by that of Stonyhurst in Britain in 1838 and Georgetown in 1844. In subsequent years, their total number reached about 70, spread throughout the world. The first observatories were astronomical, but they soon became dedicated 
to terrestrial magnetism, meteorology, and seismology. The period from 1950 to 1980 saw the greatest number of Jesuit scientists in modern times, a total of 547 in mathematics, physics, chemistry, and biology. In 2005, the number of Jesuit scientists was 143, so be it. In summary, from its foundation by St. Ignatius in 1540 and linked to their educational work, the Society of Jesus has maintained a continuous and institutional involvement in the natural sciences unparalleled by any other religious order in the Catholic Church. Because its foundation coincided with the beginning of modern science and the foundation of colleges and universities, the natural sciences rapidly became an apostolic mission at the frontiers. At the core of Ignatian spirituality is the emphasis of finding God in all things and seeking the greater glory of God everywhere that we go. Jesuit scientists and their lay colleagues here at Le Moyne and elsewhere have found and continue to find an affinity between scientific work and their spirituality, and they continue to try and integrate both together in their lives. This sculpture helps to perpetuate that spirit. Thank you very much.